Hello and good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Lander. I am a 27-year resident of the Fearless of Ridgeview, and I my address is 2520 Trail West Lane. I would like to make this message to all of the residents who are here at the Fearless of Ridgeview, and I hope that you all will receive my message with a positive view and a positive outlook. I will try to smile and not be stone-faced because really I'm very happy. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy even though I'm not in the best of health, but I'm still strong, strong like a young raging bull. And I'm ready to take the fight to the enemy and I'm ready to fight until victory because in my world, we believe in the struggle, in the fight, a luta continua. And today I come to you. I come to you to bring the message about what happened today at the HOA meeting, which was called at 11 a.m. Now, who calls a, 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 a board of directors and a general meeting of a homeowners association at 11 a.m.? on a weekday when people are supposed to be at work. The only people who do that are people who don't really want people to participate. And that is the problem here at the Fairways of Ridgeview. And this is why I'm making this message to the community because I want to call out the hypocrisy of what has been happening here. We've lived here for 27 years. For 20 of those years, a man named David Joss, David Joss, I don't know if he's Jewish, if he's Muslim, if he's Christian, because everybody now talks about God and their faith and their, their, their faith and how, how good they are because they are Christian or they are Jew or they are Muslim, but they wouldn't wait for one minute to stab you in the back. David Joss, Mimi's dead, Mimi's gone, and there is no restraint on me. Mimi was the one who would come in and talk and negotiate with you all. And the, you know, when I met David Joss, when I ran for office, he said, oh, Mr. Lander, you know me. I'm the one who told you that before you sell your house, you got to get rid of your shed. I want to tell David Joss today that he can go and intercourse himself and he can go and sodomize himself because this HOA and this community have attempted to sodomize me and sodomize my family without foreplay and without lubrication because I painted my house because I am an American patriot. I love the United States of America. I believe in the Constitution. I painted the house red, white, and blue, and they acted like I had killed somebody. I had raped their children, and I had sodomized their sons. Yes. So they sued me. And today they talk about going to the lawyer to see who they can squeeze for money. You see, we didn't buy property to be punished. We didn't hire CMA to punish us. And I want you to listen to the recording of the calls from today. And to see how condescending David Joss was to me. And to see how condescending CMA and the representative of CMA is. Maybe I'm speaking too loud. Let me lower my voice, okay? Because the microphone is very effective. So CMA comes on the call. They talk to us like we ain't shit. They got more rights than us. And this is our property, right? And the woman is talking about putting an extinguisher at the pool because somebody brought a grill to the pool. First of all, do people have a right to bring a grill to the pool? I know as a Negro, if I brought a, a grill to the pool, they would call the police and do all kinds of things to me. They won't talk about spending $300 to put a fire extinguisher there. And then the lady from CMA is talking about how we could use the cameras at the pool to see who comes there and then we could find them and violate them. It's all about punishment. Ladies and gentlemen, you send your children to school. They're being punished. They're being criminalized before they leave middle school, before they leave high school. What kind of society is this that is based on punitive measures? 
private property in the United States of America and Western culture is, is the most important right. It's more important than life itself. And so in the past few years, this HOA and the legal firm Riddle and Williams and CMA have been attempting to usurp our property from us simply for painting and saying that we didn't come to get uh, permission from the ACC. But who is the ACC? They've never said who the ACC is. Okay? They've never said who the ACC is. A little wine. So, Ms. you have a little wine to calm things down. Then you got to take a little medication. Keep your nerves down. Because you see, right now, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. You see, in 2019 and 2020, I was off my game. And I was uh, what you call, um, how you call that again? The legal firm, if I am to report them to the board of direct, the, 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 the law, which is the, um, the bar, which I plan to do. I plan to, to get Williams, Riddle and Williams disbarred. And the particular attorney they had working with me, I forgot his first name, but he might get in trouble too, because what they did was extort me. They extort me and they applied cohesion. So all I, I had to acquiesce. But sometimes in war, you have to agree to terms that you are not in favor of in order that you shall live to fight another day. And that other day has come and it came today. It came today because I could not believe that in a community where there are 384 houses, that we had a meeting today and it was only attended by four people and two of those people were Joss, David Joss and another woman, I guess she's a member of the board and her name is probably Anna Moen and I believe the other woman, what was her name? The one that told them to cash my thousand dollar check whether or not I agreed to it. Uh, Marilyn. Marilyn is no longer there, I suppose. She couldn't take the pressure, so she got out of the kitchen. There was Jennifer Maben, which was a representative of CMA, and she talked to us like we were little dogs, and CMA has more rights than us. And um, they had a man named David, S-W-I-E-R-E-N-G-A. You know, he probably Eastern European, I don't know and Anna Moen, and I don't know who else was on the call by, uh, by telephone, but they didn't speak. So I spoke and they shut me down. They shut me down. And I asked David about all the roofs and the fences that were being done and the painting without HAO approval. And he said, worry about your own roof. I want to tell you this, David. You should never fuck with me. You have been fucking with me for 20 fucking years. And Machiavelli say, a prince should never fuck his subjects' women, and he should never fuck with his subjects' property. You tell me, get rid of the shed when I'm ready to... Did I ever fucking tell you that I intended to sell this property? This is our fucking property. We plan to stay here until we die. Mimi died fucking here, and she's in turn fucking here. And I will die and I'll be interned here. Where will you be? You'll probably be in a fucking nursing home somewhere. Now let me tell you this. I already know you have an enlarged prostate. And I want to tell you that your time has come for you to move on. You and the other people in the last 20 years had made it impossible for other people to participate in the running of this community. For the most part, the HOA is irrelevant. It has abdicated its judiciary responsibility to this community. It has 
only serve as a rubber stamp for CMA and for Riddle and Williams. And I, Peter Emmanuel, on today want to tell you this kind of insult you gave to me today deserves an unimaginable response. And I'm going to respond to you. I'm going to respond to CMA. I'm going to respond to the attorney firm. And you've been talking today about going to the attorney and trying to come and foreclose on people. And I know you have me done as owing you 5,300 and something dollars. And I already paid you all $1,500 simply for painting my house. And the fact of the matter is for 20 something years, you have not um, applied the rules. It has been selective enforcement. And you call yourself a MAGA Republican, a Trump Republican, a, a patriot, but I'm the only one who painted red, white, and blue. And today, when I go through the community, all the people have replaced their roofs without HOA approval, without city permits. And guess what? You want to shut me down. Well, guess what, David? I'm coming for you. I, Peter Emanuel, I am coming for the board. I'm coming for, the, for CMA. And I'm coming for the legal firm. Because, number one, you don't even have a right to exist. You're supposed to have a board with three members. You never work to expand it. And you could not even get a quorum to, in, to, 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 to get the third board member appointed. So right now, you're operating two people. Two people dictating what happens to 384 people. That cannot be right. That cannot be constitutional. Not in the United States of America. And not in the state of Texas. And not within the rights of individual property rights. No, no one has decided to take you on. But I'm telling you today, as much as you see me and you hear me, that I, Peter Emmanuel, the small axe, the small axe which is made to chop down a big and mighty tree, a small axe which is really sharp, I am coming to chop you all down and to cut you down to size. I believe, David, you should voluntarily leave while you can. You should voluntarily leave. And you shouldn't try to attempt when I wrote to you to ask you to get rid of that debt. You better do it. And if you don't do it, if you don't do it, I'm going to give you an unimaginable surprise. Because really and truly, I don't just want you to take away the 5000 I want that 1500 I paid you all. I want it back. I want all my fucking money back, okay? Because you all are fucking wrong. You all don't do nothing right. And we're not going to sit here under a fucking David Jones dictatorship for 20 fucking years. This is not your personal program. This is our private property. We have human rights. We have property rights. And only a fucking idiot and a fool is going to let things go on with the status quo. And I, Peter Emanuel... By this very video and this very statement, I'm putting you on notice that we're going to change things around here. And I'm going to show you how that's done. And you're going to be proud of me. You're going to be very proud of me. Because if you ever as once try to mess with me again, if you try to jeopardize my family legacy, if you want to jeopardize what I work for, I will come and take everything away from you. I will take your retirement from you. I will take your social security from you. And most of all, I will put the curse of the voodoo master on you. And that prostate you have that's already enlarged, I will let it grow into prostate cancer. I will let it go to prostate cancer. And any one of you women out there, for whatever reason, because I never did anything to you all, it's just the hatred in your DNA and in your blood that you have. Uh, because you see, I tried to participate. I tried to join the board. But you rejected me. And he yourself said the day that I ran for office was the day the most people ever showed up for a board meeting because they didn't want me to be on the board because of their racism and their hatred and their jealousy. But guess what? You can't stop me now. You can stop me now. I'm going to see to it that the HOA of the Fairways of Ridgeview is dissolved. The corporation is dissolved because it's not doing anything. 
I'm going to see to it that the relationship with CMA is dissolved because they're not doing anything. And I'm going to see to it that the legal firm is sanctioned because they are predatory debt collectors. And you as much as dare to bring a collection against me or to attempt to foreclose on me, then you will see how I will own the entire community. I will own this HOA and I will own the community and all of your insurance and all of your money will go to compensate us. Be aware now, you have done many wrong things. Be aware that we have options. Many people think they don't have options. But one thing I tell people, when one door is closed, many more is open. And so today from the meeting, and from the fact that you'll have the meeting at, what is today, Wednesday? 11 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. What do you think? People don't have to go to work. People are not at work. You don't want people to participate. You don't want people to be involved. So this is a calculated, organized conspiracy on the part of the HOA, on the part of CMA. And I want to tell that woman from CMA, uh, Jennifer Maybin, you are a rude you are rude, you are disgusting, and you speak down to the homeowners, and you spoke down to me, and you spoke down to the other gentleman who was trying to raise issues as a homeowner. And guess what? You will go in to be called to account. You see this shirt I'm wearing? It's over 10 years old. It's my son's shirt. I wear it because it makes me strong. Even though I'm old and I'm not well, I feel strong, strong like a bull, like a young raging bull, ready to go after that matador and just take him out. And that's what I'm coming to do. So when I used to wear that shirt and Mimi was alive and she'd see me in it, she'd always mistake me, say, oh, wow, you remind me so much of my only begotten son. I want to put you all on notice by this video, and I want to put the whole community of the viewers of Ridge because you're going to see this video is going to be sent to you. The link to the YouTube channel is going to be sent to you. And I want you to know that a luta continue, a struggle continues, a fight continues. And today we are declaring officially war against the HOA and war against the legal firm and war against CMA. And if you do anything right, you have to remove that debt and refund me my $1,500 that I paid you all for that fake ass lawsuit that you all brought against me. We have no fear here. I have no fear. I do not fear you. I do not fear any one of you. But in time, you will come to fear me the way you pretend to fear it and to fear Jesus and to fear Allah and whatever mumbo jumbo religious shit you all say you all believe in. Because everything in this world is done by man and woman, and it is we that oppress one another, and I am no longer going to be oppressed by you. You're no longer going to continue to sodomize me and my family without foreplay and without lubrication. No, we are going, you see, even in life, no one stays on top forever. David, you can't stay on top forever. Even in sex, you have to switch positions. Like Aliyah say, switch positions. Give it to me. Rock it for me. Do it for me. We are getting ready to switch positions. And David, you have to go. You must decide if you want to go voluntarily or if you want to go involuntarily because illness and sickness will be visited upon you that will make you so disabled that you'll have to hire a foreign immigrant like people like me from where I come from to bathe you, to wash your ass and to feed you because that's where you're headed for the evil that you have done against your fellow men and your fellow women. And you have cameras at the pool. But I took a picture at the pool with my camera. You called the police on me. I don't even know if the woman was a resident. But today you are collecting videos. Who are you spying on at the pool? Are you part of an international pedophile movement? Who is monitoring those videos? What are they looking for? 27 fucking years. At most some white kids, there's only white kids that do vandalism. 
may have gone in there and thrown the pool chairs in the pool. But why do we need videos? Are you jerking off to the children? Are you jerking off to the women? Are you selling those videos on an international Chinese and Indian sex trade website? Tell me. I want to know. It's my fucking money that paid for those cameras. And it's my fucking money that's paying for them to be monitored. And I don't see the need for them to be there. We are fucking adults. We are fucking people who own property. You understand me? We are the fucking people who own property. We're not little children. You can go and criminalize your children in, in school if you want to. I mean, have them motherfuckers are crazy and they're shooting up each other because you all live in a society of racism and you don't understand it transfers to your children and you have all these guns so they come and they take your gun they go to shoot the teacher to shoot their friends that's why i didn't want them assembling in front of my house because they are future terrorists they are future terrorists they are future prostitutes they are future drug addicts i don't want them the school boss in front of my house because one day they were going to come there and shoot up each other so i'm telling you today i'm telling you today you need to honor my letter, and if you don't, you'll hear from me. Then you need to get off the board and give some other people a chance. Now, the fact that the board is operating with two members, that's a violation of the rules. And you couldn't even get a quorum earlier this year to elect another board member. So that tells you that you have turned all of the homeowners off. They won't send in a proxy and they won't come to the meetings. You have completely turned off the people. So you cannot say you're a success. You cannot say you're a good leader. No, you're not. You have failed. You have failed at leadership. You have failed in everything that is required. And that's why Peter Lander is telling you to get the hell out of the way and make way for me to come in. Yes, I'm coming in and I will lead and I will excite the community and people will participate because look, I'm old, I'm handsome, I'm strong, and I'm strong like a raging bull. And I'm telling you, a luta continua, the fight continues, the struggle continues, and you're getting ready to hear from us in a way that you haven't heard before. You think that $5,000, $5,300 is like a noose around your neck? No, it's a noose around your neck. And we're going to show you that not too distant future. So you do one thing, save yourself the trouble, wipe it out, I'll let you free. You fail to do that, and I'm going to show you, it's going to cost you more, and you're going to pay off my mortgage. Thank you. God bless you. I bless you. And I'm telling you, if you don't do the right thing, you're going to be disabled with prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is what we visit on all of those who choose to act against us and who choose to act against our financial interests and who threatens our homestead. This is no joke. This is serious. Spiritually, we'll send the voodoo curse on you and you will go down on the call very quickly. Observe. Very quickly. You're more than welcome to. There will be no more questions at that time. Um, so, who wants to go first? If you have a question, it's for the board. Um, it is your time to bring it up. You have three minutes. Go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, this Who is, is speaking? This is uh, Peter Lander at 2520 Trail West Lane. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Good. I have a very quick and short question. And that is, I received an email from CMA that said that you had a program to retire and forgive uh, dues or, or any type of arrears. I believe I sent a letter in very early this morning for consideration by the board. And I'm asking for forgiveness of the balance 
on our account uh, dating back to the fiasco of 2019. So that's really one of my main concerns is about that. I do have other concerns, but I don't really think uh, we want to get into that right now. Okay. Um, well, if you turn it into customer care, it will be sent to the board, and then you'll get your response from there. I do not have an answer for you at this time. It, it's a little bit of a process. It has to go through customer care, and then our um, accounts receivable, and then it goes to the board. So give it a couple of days, if you would, please, sir. Okay, I will. The other question I have, again, um, I am not familiar with everyone on here. I don't really see that many people. There may be other people joining my phone. Um, whom are you and what is your role? I'm Jennifer Maben. I am your association manager. Dave Joss is on the phone. Uh, he is your president and Anna Moonen is your vice president. Okay, then the other... And then we have... Go ahead. The other question I had and the other concern I had is that in 30 years, do we still have a three-member board of directors? Yes, currently you have two. Uh, and I think, I believe the board is looking at a couple of people to um, appoint to the board at the time. Uh, yeah, you yeah, back have any actions been taken to ex to expand the membership of the board, say from three to five? No. no. We have not. Okay, um, maybe we can discuss that offline. I now only have three minutes. The other question I had was, um, and which again we can take offline, is compliance with the the, what you call the CCRS or the deed restrictions, um, we know that it says that whenever you change a roof or you change a fence, you have to get HOA approval. And to my knowledge, we have had maybe 90% of the homes here having roofs replaced. Fences, I've noticed, have been replaced over the years. Um, my research showed there were no city permits pulled for that work. So I assume if a person didn't have the audacity not to pull a city. I beg your pardon? My suggestion, would you be, my suggestion would be that you worry about your roof and your fence. Uh, Dave, that is, that is very condescending. Very condescending and very rude. You shouldn't speak to me that way. The so rules we can't speak rules. to other homeowners' accounts. We just, got a lot of feedback, but please put your please put your phones on mute if you're not speaking. So there's a few things, Peter. I just wanted to say, touch base on real fast. So we can't speak to other homeowners' accounts, and we're not talking about homeowners' accounts. We're talking about selective. We're talking about selective enforcement by the HOA. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about got other it. homeowners. Well, and I think it's a Thank very you defensive of you. Your three minutes is up, and we will discuss this with the board in an executive session. Dave Swearinga, do you have anything you want to say to the board? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just concerned about how much detail is given to what is going on in the HOA. When you send out a message about an HOA board meeting, and it tells me that it's going to happen after the general meeting. That was a copy from a previous message. Is that typical of how much attention you give to what's happening at this board? For example, do you look at uh, landscape, landscape people's bids? If there is a big jump in the water meter, do you go check that? How much attention do you pay to this HOA? I know we're low maintenance and we're small. We're probably really small in the big CMA uh, uh, universe. But I'm asking, I'm concerned about how much attention you pay to us when you send out a message that is obviously not proofread. What message are you speaking of? I'm talking about the, the notification for this board meeting. We sent out about a week or so ago 
I sent a message back to customer service that was supposedly sent to you. So you should have a response to what I sent. You should have a copy of it. I will. I have not seen it come through. But if you could email me directly, that would be fantastic, and I can look into that for you. Okay. But my question really isn't the message. My question really is, how much attention do you pay to details for what we're doing? And, uh, and maybe another question is, board members, is it time to look for another management company? And that's a rhetorical question. That's my question. that was sent out that obviously wasn't proofread. But I'll send it to you again. I'll send the message to you again. I think I Please agree. do. Yes, please do. Because we, we look at those. Go ahead. Please do send it, Dave. We we do look at those and they are proofread. So no, they're not. not quite sure. No, they're not. No, they're not. I know Dave. how to proofread. I know how to proofread messages. And it wasn't. Well, if it was missed by me, it was missed by others, including my VP. So, for that, I apologize. Please go ahead and send that to me, and I can take a look into what happened, and if there's any discrepancies. All right. We will go ahead and move into uh, the board meeting. Um, so obviously you're more than welcome to stay on to listen to the meeting. Um, uh, there will be no more questions. This is a board meeting for board business, um, but you're more than welcome to observe. Um, Dave, are you ready for me to continue? Yes. Um, what was ratified in the last meeting, between meetings via email, was the bush installation extension for this property. Um, have you all had a chance to look at the meeting minutes for August? Yes, I have. Motion to approve. I move the approval last minute. I second. Financials. I'll get these monthly. The pinnacle sitting at thirty thousand. Anna, I'm gonna mute you because it's got some back some some stuff going on in the background. Um, thirty thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars. Um, at a 3.3% rate, and then your um, restricted is sitting at $93,074 at a 3.3% rate. <clears throat> Overall versus budget, um, the association has experienced a positive $5,600 um, variance. Um, your actual year-to-date net income is $8,200 versus an estimated net income of $2,600. So good job revenues were above budget estimates by $6,200 and operating costs were above budget estimates by $565. Um, your operating account with North State Bank and excess operating account with Pinnacle collectively are sitting at $74,794.41. Um, you have, again, $93,000.74 uh, $74 in your reserve account. With your uh, accounts, for, uh, accounts receivable minus allow your allowance for doubtful account sitting at $8,700. And your insurance and other prepaid, which is your King's Three, it's your pool phone, emergency phone, is sitting at $7,467. Um, with your fixed assets, cameras minus depreciation, your total assets are sitting at $184,666. Um, and as you can see, that balances 100% with your life abilities and equity, which is what they're looking for the well-balanced balance sheet. Going high level into your um, Income statement, um, you had two audits hit this year. Um, they were behind a little bit, so 2021 and 2022 came in in the same year, which is not what you anticipated, so you're a little over there. Um, you have some savings in your supplies, um, your community activities, but I know you're planning something here coming up in October. You've got a little bit of overage in water, 
Um, and yes, Dave, we do look at those water bills, and if something is high, I do reach out to the landscape company to see if there's some kind of a leak, um, because if there's a huge leak, um, a lot of times we can have a one-time um, refund from the city. So yes, we do look into those things. Um, you've had some savings in general maintenance, um, and lights and trees, and um, we were a little bit over in irrigation repairs, um, and then you've saved quite a little, like, nickel and pennies going through your pool, GL codes, uh, savings of $1,059. Um, and then you have interest on reserves that came in over what was anticipated. Uh, total operating expenses were negative $565, and your net income is $5,670. Management reports, as you know, has changed. Um, this really cool stuff, and it gets more and more detailed as, you know, you can see the, all the budget stuff. I, again, it's a snapshot in time. I try and plug in as much as I am doing on every single project. Unfortunately, you know, we all have, it's hard to do double work, so I try and get the meat and potatoes in these management reports to be able to kind of see where we're at. Um, 85 phone calls, 15 hours. Um, homeowner inquiries, violations, all the things. And then today we're talking about the 2024 budget, which you guys have jumped on the Man, call I'm on here on the this board of directors meeting. No where, where you out? Yeah, I'm out for breakfast with some of the fellas. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm over here. Um, we'll talk later. I'm, I'm at attending my board of directors yeah. meeting. I was just going to share with you how unattended it is and how they um treating me, but we'll talk about it later. Okay, we'll talk later. Okay. okay. Right. If you didn't hear me, I move we approve the budget. Thanks, Dave. Anna? Yes, I second. Awesome. Um, and we have our firefighter holiday light um, estimate. Coder fire extinguisher estimate, CMB landscape estimate, and legislative update. So, <clears throat> this was the this is who you guys have been using for years. He lives in the community. He is a um, retired firefighter. Um, I went ahead and included, um, and, I, and I hadn't seen these previously as to what the decorations actually are. Um, so I've included those. Um, are we all wanting to move forward with him this year? What do you think, Anna? I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah, I am too. He did it good. It looked okay last year. It was good. And he hasn't raised his prices. Okay. So motion, Anna, and second, Dave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Um, it was suggested uh, because y'all did have uh, somebody bring a fire pit into the pool area last summer. Um, that maybe you might want to get a fire extinguisher up for $237. That, I know, kind of a Your blouse is... Just for like a fire extinguisher that you could go down to Home Depot and buy? That's what I was thinking as well. Um, I am for a fire extinguisher. Um, I also want to know where it will be located so it can't be tampered with much. Yeah, I think and that's And the price. So uh, can you see my screen, Anna? Yes, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. So usually these are somewhere where homeowners can have access to them in case of an emergency. Right. Um, I would suggest putting it somewhere either by the above the water fountain maybe or um, on the wall somewhere over by where the um, bulletin board is would be a good location. Uh, yeah, the trip charge and tech labor is $80, $90. So if yeah. y'all want to do it yourself, you're more than welcome to. I just thought I'd throw this out there. Um, I just have a bit, little bit of a concern of having a fire extinguisher being over there as just being a toy for some of those kids yeah. that like to jump the fence at night. 
Usually people don't touch those because those can get people into a lot of trouble. <laughs> I, I suggest but we put up some to you. sort of uh, sign that explains the repercussions that someone is up for if they're tampering with it. At, is it not an emergency? I think that is important. Just a yep. small sign to have next to it. I okay. suggest it should be somewhere under the cover structure of the pool. Yep. Um, yes, and just for record, I, you know, y'all have an emergency phone at the pool. I don't have a lot of people trying to mess with that or try and calling, you know, you know. Yeah, but you can't pull that off the wall and shoot foam out of it. That's correct. So do you want to table this and look into the Home Depot or what would you no, like where, where, did this, no. where did this, where did this come from? Who, who initiated it? Yeah, this is the first I heard about it. Yeah, I I looked into it for you because you had somebody come in with a fire pit last year, and whenever I was having fire um, your fire extinguishers um, updated and inspected at other pools, right? Because you want to make sure that they're not expired. Um, I noticed that y'all did not have one, so I brought it to your attention that you might want to have one. You don't have to have one, uh, but it might be a good idea because. You do have people bringing it that did bring a fire pit in, and all my other pools have one. So I just thought I would bring that to your attention. All right. So for maintenance uh, going forward, who will regularly check on this? Is there are there um, visits that requires for some regulation once a year that is checking expiration and how how much are those trip charges? Are those similar to this? I see this is a one time for an install and going out there. Yeah, it would be less. Us. It would be less than this. I'd have to find out. Coder would do the, he does the inspections for all mine. He, I just give him a list and he goes to all of the, all of my um, associations to make sure that they're not expired. Um, and I only call him if they are expired. So he's not making a needless trip charge if there's a two year expiration date on it. So I would have to find out how much his trip charges are, but it looks like they're 55 bucks. Okay. They run for it. I don't know where you stand. I don't know. We lived here since 2001. We've never had one and I don't know. I mean, it's not an obscene amount of money, but. I could suggest that we put it in. We go ahead and approve this one. And then we observe one year if we have increase of cost because people are tampering with it. I think also with the increased surveillance we'll have about the pool area, we'll also be able to capture those that are tampering with it if it's not an emergency. Okay. So we have the motions. Anna motioned. Dave second. All right, and then CMB landscaping, this seemed to be quite high. Um, I want to just, he sent it over to me, and I wanted to give this to y'all to take a look at. Maybe y'all can go over there and take a look at it together to tell me um, what your thoughts are. I don't know if seeding is a waste of money in the heat here, um, but that would be a board call. And this is for that area behind the basketball feet, court where all in those tennis court. Are. Mm -hmm. Behind the on the the open area, basically, not mm -hmm. the the new saw that was put under the treed area. This is on the opposite side, correct? Right, adjacent mm -hmm. to the pool. No, I think they're talking about behind the basketball court and to the. If you're standing on that on uh, the street there to the right of the of the tennis courts, mm -hmm. that where there's like 15, 20 trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that area was recently put in new type of grass, correct? He says apply fescue seed in area underneath trees. This is done yearly. It's maintenance, basically. 
Possibly. Let me, do you want me to ask more questions about this? Yeah, I would say yes. I would say we should ask more questions. When we did install that new grass, because it was all no grass before, it was just bare, and beautifully done, put in. We should have known at that time how much is expected to kind of continue, maintain what they had installed. Didn't we do that at that time? And what to expect? Dave? I, I don't remember them putting any sod in underneath those trees. That's always... Really they like initiated this. this, right? I mean, the, the, the re, redoing of the tennis court surface and the basketball surface and the, the grass, which was really nicely done. It was good that we did that. I just wasn't part of the board at that time, so I don't know if this was looked into. Jennifer, were you part of that initiative? Do you, do you have notes or do you remember? That was done before my time, but I can look more into it. Okay, I would suggest we, is this something that needs to be done? Is it time critical? Is it a season that it, this needs to be done right now? Otherwise, we have other consequences. Mm -hmm. Is this going to die out? Is it, you know, Anna, do you want to send me an email with all of your questions mm -hmm. and I will send it over to the landscape? Yeah, yeah I want to hold off on this because I want to go over there and take a look because I, I okay. thought it was just, it's just a muddy mess under there. I didn't know there was. No, it's not. There. No, no, no. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, beautiful right now. You know what? Sorry, oh. Dave, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> I interrupted Dave sharing that. You have to listen to this. You know, we only have two well, minutes it would of the board. Be the board discussion only. Okay, I'm not sure where the sound was coming from. Yeah, and this one guy been on here for over 20 years. Okay, but so yeah, I feel like you know, uh, tell me, worry been about my home. laid out like as, as a grassy area, uh, which I think we should keep maintaining, but we need to be proactively aware of the maintenance expected, average maintenance expenses, unless there's a. Uh, right, that seems a lot for it to be annually. Why are we losing that much grass annually in that area? Yep, so yep. Let's, let's table this for now. And um, both Dave and myself can individually take an extra look. I pass by there every day. I know it's fairly nice looking still, but I can't remember the details, so I'll make another trip out there. Thanks. Just email me your questions, or yes. you want to take a picture with, and then send it to me so that I can ask pointed questions of Cody. That would be great. Okay. Sure. And then, lastly, you had some legislative updates come through. Um, let me pull this up real fast for you guys to take a look at. Um, so, pretty much, what they're saying is we need to engage your attorneys to make sure that these bills that passed. Um, are reflected accurately in your governing documents because they have to be by January 1st, 2024. So we need to proceed if the board, I, I obviously I need an approval from you guys to engage the attorneys, but um, that's what this whole Riddle and Williams put this together of what it all entails for you guys to read through at your leisure um, and like the collection stages and some of the changes um, to enforcement policies. Um, we just want to make sure that your getting documents are, are reflected of these changes. So can okay. I get an approval to move forward with the attorneys? Yeah, sounds like something we have to do. I second. Awesome. That is all I have for open session. Um, so we're going to, do you want to adjourn the meeting, Dave, and we'll move into executive session at 11.28? Yep. Call the meeting to an end and we'll go into executive session, yes. In a second? Yes, I'm still on mute. Sorry about that. Perfect. All right. If homeowners will jump off the call, um, we'll be discussing um, homeowner information um, and well, stuff that's only privy to the board. Dave got off. It looks like uh, Lander got up and walked away. Let me see if I can, what I can do about that. Hold on.
NBC5 today. Thank you for watching NBC5 today. I'm Evan Anderson. We have the details of a stunning arrest of two Texas Department of Public Safety employees. They are accused of taking bribes in exchange for protecting inspection stations, accused of police getting cars to turn for victim people at vicious tests. NBC5 investigates as it takes copies of search warrants that reveal how the investigation unfolded. Senior investigator Porter Scott Friedman has the details. The warrant paperwork details how the Texas Rangers used bank records to uncover the alleged bribes paid for one of the two DPS employees. The warrants also describe how the DPS unit graded the business at the center of the investigation, making arrests, seizing vehicle inspection records, a loaded gun, and thousands of doses of psychedelic mushrooms. Broken glass and boarded windows after a Texas DPS 